All right, so picture this. You're staring at an EKG, right? And you have to figure out if it's showing ventricular tachycardia dot VT. We're diving into that today. We're talking Brigada criteria. Yeah, these criteria are essential for EKG interpretation. We'll break it all down so you can really understand it. This isn't just about like reading some weird code. We're talking about knowing when someone needs help right away versus uh, more, you know, intense care. Exactly. Right treatment, right patient, right time. That's what the Brigada criteria help us with. No more EKG anxiety after this. It's like a step by step and we're going to go through it together. The first thing we look at is concordance. Concordance. Yeah, basically are the heart's electrical impulses, which the EKG picks up, are they all going the same way? In those chest leads, V1 through V6. So if those lines on the EKG are all moving the same direction in those leads, that's like, oh, VT clue. Exactly. Now, if concordance isn't clearly pointing to VT, then we got to look at the RS interval. Which is? It's just a measurement right on the EKG printout. And what makes that measurement important? We're looking for 100 milliseconds. Longer than that, chances of VT are higher. Big red flag on the EKG. Okay, so we got concordance, then that RS interval, two clues down. What's next? We've got to look at AV dissociation. AV, di what does that even mean? It means the top and bottom parts of the heart not beating together like they should. That's that's common in VT. And that's visible right there on the EKG, just in how the waves are timed. Right, right. Now, let's say we've looked at those things. Concordance, that interval, the AV thing, and it's not adding up to VT. We're not done yet, though, right? There's more. One more big one. This is where it gets a little trickier. we got to analyze the QRS complex. That's that big spike you see on an EKG. We're looking for specific patterns. Specifically, does it look like a right bundle branch block? <laughs> or a left bundle branch block. Okay, two different patterns. What makes them significant in VT though? These patterns give us insight into how the heart's electrical system is working or you know, not working sometimes. So we're like looking at the shape of the electrical impulses to see if VT is the culprit. Exactly. Now a right bundle branch block means the electrical impulse is taking a detour, basically delaying activation on one side of the heart. And you often see this like bunny ear pattern in the QRS complex, especially in lead V1. Bunny ear, huh? Right. That's a, uh, that's vivid. It's a good visual. Yeah. Now, left bundle branch block, we're looking for different things. A wide R wave or a slurred S wave. These subtle changes in the QRS complex can make a huge difference. Wow. It's crazy how much information is packed into those waves. Yeah. It's like a code almost. And as you practice, you start picking up on those little patterns, those nuances that tell you which rhythm it is. Okay, so we've covered concordance the RS interval AV dissociation, and these patterns in the QRS complex. It's a lot to remember. It is a lot. But remember, these criteria are meant to be used systematically. We don't just look at everything at once. So there's like a method to this madness, an order of operations. Right. Concordance is often our first check. If it's there, it points toward VT pretty strongly, and we act accordingly. If not, then we move on to the next clue. And the next. This way we don't jump to conclusions, and we're considering all the evidence. Building a case piece by piece. And even then, sometimes it's not totally clear. What happens if the EKG is kind of iffy? If the Brugada criteria don't give us a definitive answer? Well, that's where the art of medicine comes in. It's about putting those EKG findings together with the patient's whole story. Then the symptoms, their history, other test results. So it's not enough to just memorize the criteria. It's yeah. about seeing the bigger picture. Absolutely. These criteria are incredibly valuable, but they are just tools. They don't replace good clinical judgment or a thorough evaluation. That makes sense. Speaking of valuable tools, you mentioned something called the Verikai algorithm. How does that fit in with everything? Great question. It actually complements the Brugada criteria by giving us another way to tell VT apart from other rhythms. It focuses on lead AVR, which is often overlooked. So we're looking at a whole different part of the EKG. Why is lead AVR so important? Lead AVR gives us a unique view of the heart's electrical activity from a different angle. It's like getting an extra camera angle in a sporting event. Right. Sometimes that different view shows us something we wouldn't have seen otherwise. Okay, so what does it show us then? Well, the Verike algorithm points out that the timing of the R wave in the QRS complex and lead AVR, that can be really revealing. So for everyone listening, the R wave is that upward spike on the EKG, and we're looking at where it is within that whole QRS complex. Exactly. If that R wave in lead AVR is dominant right at the beginning of the QRS complex, well, that makes VT more likely. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. But if that dominant R wave shows up later in the complex, well, then it might be a different rhythm altogether. So even the timing of that one little upward spike can change the diagnosis. Exactly. It's really amazing how these diagnostic tools work.
Right. We've got the Brugada criteria, the Varecki algorithm. Yeah. Yeah. And they help us make sense of such a complex system like the human heart. It's important to remember that even with medicine, yeah, where we have all this data and technology, there's still interpretation involved. Yeah. You know, pattern recognition, putting the clues together to get the full picture. Right. It's like we're detectives. Exactly. We're looking for clues not just in the EKG itself. Right. But also in the patient's story, their symptoms, their history. Absolutely. Yeah. It's about the whole person, not just the data. This has been a fascinating deep dive into these EKG criteria. It has. And for our listeners out there, you don't need to be a doctor to understand this stuff and be a part of your own healthcare. Absolutely. Knowledge is power. Yeah. And when you understand these tools, you can ask better questions, educate for yourself or your loved ones, and make better decisions. So next time you see an EKG, don't freak out about the squiggly lines. Yeah. Think of it as a puzzle. That's a great way to look at it. That you can learn to solve. Exactly. Well, that does it for this deep dive into the Brigada criteria and the Verakai algorithm. Thanks for joining us. It was my pleasure. Thanks for having me. We'll be back soon with another episode to explore even more fascinating topics and learn together. Until then, stay curious, everyone.